Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be teaching you how to keyframe in HitFilm 4 Express. So what is keyframing? Keyframing is a method of animating in which two values are set at different points in time. And between these two points in time, an object will transform one value to another. Using this method, you can animate values such as position, scale, rotation, and in HitFilm 4 Express, almost anything. So let's get a practical look at this. To start keyframing, we have to move out of the editor into a composite shot. The reason for this is that you cannot do keyframe in the editor, only opacity and audio levels. So to create a composite shot, all you have to do is press New, Composite Shot, or click a clip you've got in your timeline and press Make Composite Shot. Once you're in your composite shot, we can begin keyframing. We can keyframe directly from the controls panel, but it's easier to explain and to understand if we use the timeline. So my goal here is to move the, this autumn leaf from the left side of the screen to the right. To do this, we're going to open up the layer. Once we've got, opened up the layer, we're now going to go into our transform. Transform is everything to do with movement. Here we can see a position value. If we drag on the values, we can change the position of the layer, or we can simply type in a direct value, such as negative 600. So we now see that it's not animating or anything, it's just staying there. So now we're going to look at these circles. These circles are how we create keyframes. To create a keyframe, just click on the circle next to the value you want to create a keyframe for, so position. We'll notice Two things. First, this circle has turned blue and it's got a little circle in the middle of it, a little dot. And we've got this diamond thing here. This diamond is the keyframe. And it says that at this point in time, we've saved the information that the position is negative 600. So now we want to go to the end of the video and move the leaf all the way over to the right of the screen. So now I'm going to set it to 600. Now it's all the way on the right of the screen. In fact, I might even move it a bit up here. So now, it's saved the position of 600 and 238 at this point in time. So between these two points, because we've set the keyframes, it will now animate between these two positions. Let me just move this down, just to make it more interesting. So not only can we keyframe the position, we can also keyframe something such as the rotation. Say for example, I want to rotate this, but I want to animate it. Let's just create a keyframe. As we can see, now we've created a keyframe just by clicking on that button. We're going to go to the end of the video now, and as soon as we change something, it will create a keyframe. I'm going to set it to about 100. And this is however many revolutions. So 116 degrees, or 360 degrees plus 116 degrees. Now we have a whole revolution and 116 degrees. Very nice and handy. You'll notice that over time these circles change. If something's blank and white, it means that keyframing is not enabled for that. If it's blue and it's got a little dot on it, it means that keyframing is enabled and at the current frame, we have a keyframe. If there's no dot on it, that means there's no keyframe at that current time. So we can animate pretty much any one of those things. But not only things in the transform, as you can see here, in this background layer, I've got a huge shift effect. Now we're going to go into our controls tab and have a look at how we can keyframe things right from the controls tab. If we open our effects and go into our hue shift, I'm now going to keyframe this value. Let's just reset it to zero. All right then. So to do this, again, we just go to the beginning of the video or where we want our keyframe to be. We're going to Press that and now we see we've got a keyframe on that first frame. Now we're going to scroll all the way to the end of the video and I'm just going to set it to one whole revolution and five degrees, why not? So now we can see it changes color quite pleasantly. But there's more to keyframing than just this. Let's go back to our autumn leaf layer. Now we've got a lot of interpolation options. So what is interpolation? Well, interpolation is what happens between the keyframes. So how do we change interpolation? 
First we're going to go into temporal interpolation, which is probably the easiest to understand. With both of these keyframes, the position and the rotation, it's just normal. It moves from one spot to the other. It's not smooth or anything, it just does it. What we can do is select both of these keyframes. In fact, just for easiness sake, I'm just going to get rid of keyframing on rotation. We can drag to select these keyframes, and we're going to set them to constant. This means now that this, because this frame is constant, it will simply stay on this frame all the way until the next keyframe, at which it will suddenly jump. Now there's no real interpolation. But there's a whole bunch of other interpolation options too. We've got a whole bunch of smooth ones, so now this is smoothly moving from one point to the other. We've got a smooth out, or a smooth in, which will uh, smooth it at the end of the video, and a smooth out, which will uh, smooth it at the beginning of the video. So that's all with the temporal interpolations. But there's one more here that we have, and that's manual bezier. Manual bezier enables us to create a custom movement for our videos. So for example, although it moves from this point to the next point, what we can do now is make it move this way. So now when we drag these little hands around, then it will move in that sort of direction, although it still goes from point A to point B. Note that when we select these keyframes, we can differentiate between the temporal and spatial interpolation. If we select the temporal interpolation to be linear, then it will constantly go across that path. But if we set the temporal interpolation to smooth, say, then it will still go across that path, but it will still be smooth. So you can mix around between the different types of interpolations too. Alright, so that's with all the spatial and temporal interpolation. Now we're going to go into the value graph, which is something that was added in HitFilm 4 Express. To do this, I'm not going to actually animate the position anymore. I'm just going to set it back to 0, 0. And now I'm just going to keyframe the scale, just for a bit of fun. So once we've started keyframing the scale, I'm going to open the value graph, which just can be found here. Now we see we've got a completely different way of looking at things. Sure, across the x-axis from left to right, we've got time. But now instead of the layers on the y-axis, we've got values for certain things that we choose to select. So let's start off with scale. As we can see, we've already got a keyframe for our scale here. And now let's make it a bit smaller. As we can see, the numbers go down or up as we change around the scale. I'm going to set it to 30%. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to set it to a much larger 181%. So we can see now that it goes from 30 to 181. Let's just make it 180. So now we can do the same things with the keyframes that we did before. We can make them constant, and now we can see it shows up in the graph differently. We can make it smooth. As we can see, that shows up on the graph differently. Smooth in, smooth out, and manual bezier. So with this value graph, we can animate and change the bezier of values that we can't directly in here, which is really useful. For example, I can change the scale of this one to be really high at the very beginning, and then sort of fade out like so. This makes for a really cool effect, and you can play with these functions a lot. Alright guys, that's almost all I have for keyframing. The only other thing I want to talk about in keyframing is keyframing in the editor. So in the editor here, we don't have much keyframing. The only two things we can keyframe are video opacity and audio levels. So if we select our leaves composite shot, in our transform, we have the opacity, and we can see that we can't keyframe any of these, but we can keyframe the opacity. If we keyframe it to be 100 here, maybe 50 in the middle, or 37, if you like, and uh, something like 74, we can see that it sort of fades away, and it comes more transparent again. You've seen the checkerboard background because uh, 
you can set it there. But now, also we can see that on the video, we've got a little bit of a curve happening here. So this is sort of a mini value graph in itself. We can change the opacity right here. This is really useful if you want to uh, do transitions and all of that sort of thing with video layers. It's even more useful when you want to do audio level editing. So for example, not only can you normally change the level like so, but if we go into our properties of our audio, we can enable keyframing, set a keyframe here, set a keyframe in the middle as well, and set a keyframe at the end, and now we can drag these around too. This way we can create some really nice fade effects and such. Also, another pro tip, if you're keyframing something in the composite shot, in the layer properties you can turn on motion blur, and that way when it's scaling or positioning, it'll automatically add realistic motion blur to make your videos not look so computer generated and unrealistic. It doesn't take that much time to render. Alright guys, so that's pretty much all I have for today's video. If you did enjoy this video and you learned something from it, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. I will see you guys later. Bye!